By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we have a revised tournament coming up here in the Netherlands, and that is why I'm practicing a little bit with my revised decks. And today I am playing with green and blue, uh, the combination. And my opponent is playing with a, a white-red deck with a little bit of green in there, I believe, as well. And I'm starting off with a Lanawar Elf. And there is a Plateau from Wouter. He is my opponent today. Playing a Lightning Bolt on the Lanawar, so that's a goner. And I believe that uh, Wouter has built a creatureless deck, and his goal is to mill me completely so that I run out of cards. Obviously, I didn't know that in this first game, so this is uh, just a start, so it was still a surprise. And here comes a Howling Mine, something I don't really mind because I'm playing with greens, I'm playing with four Lanawars and four Birds of Paradise, so. <clears throat> for me it's um it's fine but as you can see i have a lot of mana but i have nothing to put on the table so unfortunately for me i have no mahamoti Jin or surrender Befrit at this point and there is the island sanctuary so that will give Walter the option to only draw one card instead of two cards and as an extra bonus he's also protected so he can only be attacked by flying creatures and there's another lanawar elf and there is a winter orb so the winter orb allows Wouter and myself to only untap one land. And the interesting thing is that in the revised version, you don't have access to IC Manipulator or Relic Barriers. So you cannot play any Parfait kind of style. Um, but of course, it's still useful in my blue-green build because I have eight Mana Dorks, and the Birds of Paradise times four, and the Lanawar Elves times four, and of course, Soul Ring. So I have plenty of mana, so I don't really mind the... Um, the Winter Orb. Oh, this is interesting here. I'm putting an Unstable Mutation on my Birds of Paradise. And I'm swinging in for three here. I just want to put some pressure on the board. Like I said before, I'm not drawing my Mahamoti Jins or Surrendip uh, Afrits at the moment. So let's see what's going to happen next. And he's now drawing two, as you can see. And as this game kind of progressed, I started to discover um, that uh, he was playing creatureless. I didn't know that. Oh, and look what I'm doing. I'm tapping everything. So that must mean I'm going to counter that mixed stone, and I do. And the ideal thing about this is that uh, Wouter will also be forced to tap his mana. So even though he's not going to win this power sink, he has to tap all his land down, which works fantastically with the Winter Orb. So that's a combo that you see more often, but Power Sync Winter Orb is just a great combination. And I only get to untap one land, but I have those mana dorks. And of course, there's the minus one, minus one counter on my Birds of Paradise. Swinging in here, doing some more damage. And also attacking with the Elf because he didn't deny his draw, he just uh, drew two cards. And tapping and playing a Cockatrice. And the Cockatrice is a 2 4 creature. Um, that says any creature that's been dealt or that's blocked by Cockatrice or is blocking Cockatrice is destroyed at the end of combat. So it's a, it's a great blocker, but against a deck of Wouter, it's not going to be very useful. Of course, it's, it's a flyer and it's going to do some damage, which is great. Um, but, you know, I don't have to block anything because Wouter is playing creatureless. So another, another minus one, minus one counter. So that means my Birds of Paradise is now a one, two Birds of Paradise. I'm attacking with both. Dealing three damage here. Choosing not to tap my, or to attack with my Lanawar Elf. I believe that's a misplay because damage is damage. And I have enough mana, so. And there's a Wrath of God, and that's great. Oh, and there I go. I'm able to power sink his Wrath of God. So it's not looking good for Valter here. And I just have those power sinks at the right time. But my Birds of Paradise is now a 0-1 and will die next turn. Unless I unsummon. I also play with some unsummons for that reason. But I don't believe I do here. I'm attacking here with a 2-4 Flyer. And I'm playing a Jadem Tome. And I'm correcting my own play. Instead of tapping another mana, obviously I want to just tap the Mana Bird. Uh, the... Birds of Paradise, I mean, for mana. So, 
there's an ivory tower and this is dangerous stuff because I can only hit Wouter for two damage in the air. My um, Birds of Paradise is going to die. So this is not good news for me. Because remember what Wouter wants, he doesn't necessarily want wants to attack my life total. All he wants is control the game and then slowly wait and, and see uh, me draw myself to, to my death so that I run out of cards. That's his tactic. And I'm helping him here <laughs> by drawing extra cards. I am looking for a big creature, by the way. That's why I'm doing this. Um, and by now, I still haven't fully discovered Wouter's tactic. I'm still thinking maybe it's going to be a giant fireball. And there he goes. He plays a library of Lang. And he will start gaining life instead of losing life very quickly this way. This combination of Library of Lang, Ivory Tower, and Howling Mine. Um, and of course, Island Sanctuary. It's a classic combo. There I attack with two through the air, bringing him on seven. And did I find something, or am I just tapping for mana? I found a Mahamoti Jin, so that's great for me. That's a 5-6 in the air. And now Wouter has a serious problem, and he only gets to untap one. So what he needs right now, um, he's gaining life, of course, so he's back to 10, so that's a good thing. So I can't kill him yet next turn. Uh, but what he needs is just a Swords. A Swords to Plows here. It doesn't matter how much life I gain. That's not his agenda. So he's, uh, he's passing turn, so things are looking good for me. But then again, a Swords is an instant, so it really says nothing. And I'm playing an Unstable Mutation over my Cockatrice. I'm doing this because I want to give Wouter two different targets to go on. So now he's playing his Swords. And I'm playing an Unsummon. Okay, so I'm kind of saving my Mahamoti Jin. But of course, that's... Uh, ooh, and there's an extra Giant Grove. Wow. So that means I'm hitting him for 8. Is there another Giant Grove? Oh, this is my second main phase. My second main phase. So Valdir's on 2. And I'm playing a Surrender Afrit. And I'm not sure how much life Valdir's getting. I guess 3 lives. So he's going to 5. Or does he have even more cards with the library? Okay, he has 8 cards in hand. So... He's going to 6 life in total. And next turn I can hit him for, uh, for 7. And he's not denying his island sanctuary here. So I can actually hit him for 8. So again he needs removal here to stay in the game. I'm feeling pretty confident. And that's also the reason why I chose to just activate my Janum Tome. Uh, oh, <laughs> this is a killer. Oh my goodness. There's that balance. And that means I'm losing all my creatures. And balance is so ideal when you're playing a deck with a lot of enchantments and artifacts because it doesn't count those in. So it's, it's really nice. A big downside here for Wouter is that he loses a lot of cards from his hand. On, on the other side, I mean, the other choice was to die. So it's, it's a great play here. And I'm losing all my creatures again. So this is the second time that there's a full board wipe. And that means that Wouter is getting a lot of value out of that Wrath of God and that um, balance. Let's see what I can do. I mean, I have that Mahamoti in my hand, but as you can see, I only have four mana available. So I'm just passing turn. And that's not good when your opponent is having an Ivory Tower. I mean, he's drawing two at a turn, so, so that Ivory Tower will become active again very, very soon. And, I mean, he's on six, but at this point, that six feels so so far away or the victory feels so so far away and there i'm casting my mahamoti Jin again and he's playing a disenchant on my winter orb of course and that means he gets access to all his mana so there are chances here um that he's going to destroy that mahamoti i think that's that, that's that's a pretty big chance that he's going to do that tapping four playing a single wrath of god hey but it works that's what's important. So he plays a single Wrath of God, and there goes my Ma Moti. And um, the problem here is at a certain point, I will run out of creatures. I mean, he has done so much removal here. I still have some in the deck. I'm not too worried yet. But at a certain point, I'll run out. So I'm <laughs> playing a regrowth on my Mahamoti again. I mean, that Mahamoti is like a cat with nine lives. Or was it seven lives? Anyway, um, I'm casting it again. So remember, this is the same Amoti that he tried to remove of the swords and that he unsummoned and that he then killed with a Wrath of God and then I got it back uh, with a regrowth. So that's pretty funny. And I'm also playing a Surrender Perfrit. So I'm really trying to keep the pressure on the board here. 
Um, and there, <laughs> there is the wrath of God. And this is a huge uh, mistake from my part, playing that surrender of Freed right next to the Mahmoudi Jinn, because by now I should know that he plays with probably four wrath of gods, playing creatureless, or at least three. So I'm helping him here. I'm giving him advantage by just, you know, putting creatures on the board. I shouldn't have done that. So that's that's a mistake here. Um, and and look at what I'm doing. I have two books. Ah, nice. I am playing a mana short, and a mana short is a card, a blue card, an instant that you play um, during the turn of the uh, during the upke uh, upkeep of your opponent. Sorry, and he has to tap all his mana. And he, and he, and they just simply stay tapped for for the entire turn. So that means that the only land that Wouter will have available is the land that he's going to play out right now. Um, could still be useful, but at least this kind of helps me uh, for a moment. I'm just stopping. It's it's kind of a, a revised time walk almost. And there's another ivory tower. Oh my goodness! So even with that one mana, he's able to do something useful. End of turn, I'm activating my book. I'm digging for creatures, obviously, because I know with that double ivory tower, he's going to gain life. And this is so frustrating when you're so close to the victory. But I'm not there yet, and I'm drawing even more cards here. And I should warn myself, because Wouter has an island sanctuary, so he can kind of choose how much he wants to draw. Like, do I want to draw extra? Um but I don't have that luxury. I just have to draw three cards every turn. And I'm also activating. Oh, and there's another uh, mana short for me. But it's not really relevant against uh, the deck of Wouter. I mean, he already has all the cards in the game that he wants to have in the game. And he also has that library of Lang, so he doesn't have to uh, discard any cards. So this is, this is a problem. I mean, drawing three cards, it feels really good, but... My library is slowly thinning. Drawing card number four. Drawing card number five here. I mean, can I find a creature? Oh, I found a creature. Yupity doopity. Oh, great. My two mana dorks. This is not going to save me. I even have to discard an island here. And this is just... Um, this is pathetic. I need creatures. And obviously, Wouter is gaining life here with the double ivory tower. So he's back to ten. So even if I can swing in with the Lana where it doesn't help, I mean, he gains life instead of losing, losing life. Let's see if I have an unstable or something. I, I should be able to, I should draw something at least. Unstable mutation. And in response, there is the lightning bolt and there's a giant growth to save him from the lightning bolt. And there's another lightning bolt. And I'm counting my mana. So does this mean I'm going to play? <laughs> yes, I'm playing a power sink. And this is pretty nice because um, it means that I can swing in now for six damage. And it also means that uh, my opponent has lost a lot of cards. Well, two lightning bolts, which actually is a lot. Um, so he's gaining some life. And now it's his turn. He's untapping all his mana. So we didn't do that tapping, untapping thing with the, with the power sink in this case, since I don't have a winter orb on the board. Oh, and there's a meek stone. Oh my goodness. And meek stone works so perfectly well against the, um, against the, um, I'm, I'm forgetting the name, the plus three, plus three enchantment. Uh, unstable mutation, that's that's the word I was looking for, on the Birds of Paradise, because in the untap phase, it's still a plus three, plus three, so the Birds is still three, four, and then after, in the upkeep, the minus one, minus one counter goes on there, so it doesn't untap. Playing a Mahamoti Jin here, and I'm playing a Surrender Pafrit. I feel like I'm walking into a trap again, playing um, just so many creatures here, knowing that Wouter... Um, plays with Wrath of Gods. On the other hand, he's already played three Wrath of Gods. And, um, you know, I have to deal, I have to deal him a lot of damage here. Oh, there's another Wrath of God. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this was a big mistake. I mean, look at how I'm playing. I am just, I'm just giving him this victory. I'm just, this is just ridiculous. Well, I'm not giving it to him, but I'm just making the wrong decisions. I just want to win so badly. And I thought 
when I was playing this game, I thought, you know, oh, I've, I've already won. And here you see me counting my deck, and I only have six cards in my deck still. So that means I have only two turns to go. And I'm playing a Winter Orb. That's not really relevant. And I believe that most of my big creatures are now dead. I think this last Wrath of God was really the end of the line for me here. Um, he's now gaining 10 life. Do you see that? So, I mean, he's back on 24. And he's playing a Wheel of Fortune. So, death by Wheel of Fortune. How classy. And this is so nice. I mean, Valter really fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. You've killed me with a Wheel of Fortune. How cool is that? Let's quickly go on to, to game number two and see what I can do after sideboarding. Game number two, and the only good thing about losing is that you're on the play. So at least I get to start, but what a victory there by Wouter. And, you know, at least I have some more information now about his deck. I know he plays Creatureless, for instance, so obviously that's going to change the tactic. I know that he wants me to draw myself to de to my death, so so that's a different approach. I've boarded out the, the books, the Janum Tomes, because I feel like I don't really need them against uh, Valter because he's going to let me draw anyway. And I've sideboarded in four crumbles. And I believe Valter is taking a, a mulligan here. So obviously I want to add some artifact destruction. And I think I'm, I'm mainly going to aim it on the ivory towers, the life gain. Because that's a big problem. For me, the, the Island Sanctuary is not really a big problem because the most uh, most of the damage I do comes through the air in the form of the Surrender Befreeds, the Mama, the Jins, and a little bit of Cockatrice. And playing with four Giant Growths and four Unstable Mutations can make my deck pretty aggressive as well. But let's uh, let's take a look at the board. And there we see a Tiger from Wouter. Like, like I said, he does splash a little bit of green. I wonder why. So maybe we're going to see some green magic here. Um, and I'm not really doing anything, I notice. I've played two basic forests and an island, and I've passed the turn. So that's not really great. And there's a Howling Mine from Wouter. And again, um, I understand this tactic, but for me it's really nice, because I'm kind of on this, on this dead spot, and all of a sudden I'm drawing these two cards. I just drew them from a library. I'm drawing a Lanawar Elves and a Surrender Perfreed, and all of a sudden I have a threat and I'm back in the game. So I always find it tricky to play with Howling Minds. I love decks, most of the decks that play Howling Minds, um, because just the game becomes in general more lively. You just draw more cards, your opponent draws more cards, and more stuff happens. Uh, but it is dangerous to play with it. Um, and here you see me playing an Unstable, and I hit him here for 7, or not. Okay, he plays a Disenchant over my Unstable Mutation. And of course he boarded in the red elemental blast. It's pretty nice. So that means I only get to do him one damage instead of six. Oh, but there's a giant grove from my part. So still hitting him for four here, uh, here. And I'm also playing a birds of paradise in my second main phase. So there's a lot of stuff happening here. And this is interesting. And of course, Wouter also knows my deck by now. So obviously he boarded in four uh, red elemental blasts. And when he was playing this one, I actually realized that I didn't board in any blue elemental blasts because I don't really mind the um, direct damage that he was playing against me to four lightning bolts. Uh, it wasn't my main priority because he's not playing on my life total and I have enough creatures to take some hits. So for me, the Wrath of Gods are a bigger problem. Um, but obviously I forgot the fact that he would probably board in four red elemental blasts. So that's definitely something that I'll change if I win this game and we'll go into a third game. So he, anyway, back to the game. You see me attacking here with Alana Elf, tapping everything that's exactly, it's gotta be a Mahamoti Jin. If I tap for six here, Mahamoti is coming, but Wouter is gaining life as well at the same time and drawing two cards a turn. So he now it has his Wrath of God online. Is there a Wrath of God? Oh, oh good, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it feels like, Valter just has a Wrath of God every time I'm tapped out and I have more than one creature on the board. Um, but I, I had to do it here. I don't think it's a mistake from my part. Um, you know, I had to put pressure on the board with that Ivory Tower. And here you can see one of my sideboard cards in action to crumble. And I'm actually taking back my Surrender Befreed. And the reason for this is that I can just play it directly instead of having to wait another turn if I would have chosen to regrowth my Mahamoti Jin. I just want to play very aggressive here because I feel like the more turns I give Wouter, the more turns he has to set up his, his whole style of play. 
And the crumble is really great here. The fact that I could remove the ivory tower. Playing an unstable mutation here. Hitting him for six. And there he goes. He's playing the red elemental blast. What am I doing? I'm playing a power sink here. No! And he's playing another red elemental blast. Well done. Oh my goodness. And this is the third red elemental blast from uh, Wouter here. So he, he's pulling all the breaks here. He's doing whatever he can to stop me. And he's, he's succeeding so far. So that's, that's well done, Wouter. And uh, man, man, oh man. It seems that, that he has the right cards at the right time here. Playing a second Howling Mine. And at this point, I don't really mind it yet. You know, but obviously I'm... I'm on guard because I know what happened in that first game where I wasn't on guard and again I mean you see this happening I've got seven land untapped I'm not playing a single thing the only good thing about this board state is that my opponent doesn't have that ivory tower anymore because that is so frustrating to see your opponent gaining life knowing his tactic and and you're not getting any closer to the victory at least at least it's kind of a standstill here there's a library of Lang. So all he needs now is just some ivory towers. And I'm in big, big trouble. Am I going to counter something here? Because, I mean, I have everything untapped. I think I am. What's the idea? Oh, I'm playing a power sink on his library of Lang. Not sure if that's the best decision, to be honest. Oh, yeah, we're having a little discussion here saying, okay, can I then quickly tap my mana for... Uh, to still play out spells later in the game. Um, but you can't. So, at least according to my knowledge, you let me know if that's true or not. We had a little little talk about it. And sometimes I'm wrong as well. I mean, it's not always clear to me. Um, but to my knowledge, you cannot do that. I mean, you can still play an instant or an interrupt, but you cannot use the mana to play another spell after um, the power sink is resolved because power sink says you need to tap all your mana. Uh, anyway, um, let's look at what I've done here. I've played a Winter Orb. I've played a Surrender Pafrit. So again, I'm trying to, to put Wouter in lockdown here, making sure he cannot play a Wrath of God. But remember, Swords to Plowshares, I haven't seen a single one so far yet. And a Swords only takes one white mana. And there's a Giant Grove. So I'm trying to play really aggressively here. Just really quickly deal a lot of damage. There's, there it is. Oh, and I've got another power sink. Is this, is this power sink number three or something? So I'm quite lucky with the power sinks in this game, uh, which help me to keep the Surrender Afrit alive. And I can hit uh, Wouter here for six damage. And Wouter only gets to untap one land. I think he now wants to untap everything. Oh, yeah, and here we have the little, yeah. Okay, now he's reminded. He's like, oh, yeah, of course, there's the Winter Orb. It's interesting when you're, when you're playing online, and, and maybe you've done this before, and you're, you're, you know, you're behind your computer. It's different than really sitting against your opponent, uh, opposite against your opponent in real life, and just seeing all the cards. Then you have a much better overview. I feel like playing online, it, you know, you make different mistakes in a way. I'm playing a forest here. I'm attacking with my 3-4. My and again, a giant growth. Yeah, I'm just... That's my only goal here. I just want to kill him as fast as possible. I don't want to build up anything. You know, I still have those Wrath of Gods from game one in the back of my mind. There's a di That's a good one. There's a disenchant from the Winter Orb. And in combination with uh, Wouter drawing three cards... I mean, this is this is probably really good. I mean, the chances of 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 my opponent here finding something, finding a finding a swords would already help him a lot. Finding a wrath of God would be even better. Finding a balance would be great. So, oh, here here there you go. This even a a lightning bolt. I mean, it's not not ideal, but he knows the giant groves and the um, unstable mutations. This is also again a good play. Another way to to keep himself alive. Well, there was a little glitch there, but we're back. Um, so here there's the Meek Stone. So the Meek Stone is keeping my uh, my Surrender for Free tap time, removing the Meek Stone there with the Crumble. And yeah, playing a Tranquility. 
It's not really that decisive, but I have Tranquility in my hand. Why not just play it? Also keeping in the back of my mind that balance. So I'd rather just kind of empty my hand here that if, if when he plays a balance, at least he loses a lot of cards. And there he goes. So these are all things that kind of go for your, for your head when you're making these decisions. And I feel that um, um, that's usually the weakness of playing with a combo deck is the first game you can do your thing, but the second game your opponent kind of knows what your game plan is. So you adjust it. And I think to, to really test the strength of a combo deck, you always have to play after sideboarding because then you can really determine the true strength of your, of your deck. Anyway, I'm playing another Llanowar Elf that I can use not to attack because he doesn't have the Island Sanctuary, but there's another Bolt. He's just bolting all my Elves. He bolts all my birds. And there's another Meek Stone. And that's quite nice. And an Ivory Tower. So it's, it's pretty devastating. But is there another Crumble? Crumble number three takes care of his Meek Stone. So now I've used three Crumbles and I've taken care of an early Ivory Tower and two Meek Stones. So there's a huge difference here. Having some kind of artifact removal and that's it that's the game so i'm winning game number two here that's great so we're going to continue to game number three and i'm going to board in some blue elemental blasts against those red elemental blasts so it's wouter on the play for the first time here starting with the plateau or plateau i should say birds of paradise here drop one drop for me that's pretty good that's what you want to do when you're playing with four birds and four lanowars just have that mana dork turn one and now we probably have a oh i wanted to say a lightning bolt but there is an ivory tower so he's not going to bolt the bird so that's good attacking with a zero one of course there's a giant grove again waiting for a bolt it's not coming that's great so he's on 17. i kind of for myself kind of thought okay if if he would have had a lightning bolt he would have played it first thing um he's gaining one life i believe there from the ivory tower and again, I'm playing very aggressive. Not sure if it's good to play like this aggressive first turn with that Giant Grove, but I, I know I'm not going to use the Giant Grove as a, a combat trick because he's playing he's playing creatureless. So I might as well just treat, treat it as a Lightning Bolt. So when I can use it to deal three damage, I'm going to do it. And now I'm going to tap it for mana, I guess, and I'm playing a Winter Orb. I mean, why not? I, again, I'm, I, I feel like when I, when I look at these games, I, I, I'm not very lucky with the Surrender Pafrit because my idea here is turn two, draw into a Surrender Pafrit and, and play that 3-4 flyer at turn number two after you've played the Lanoir Elves or Birds of Paradise. So let's look at what uh, Valter can do. He doesn't really mind only having two mana available. I'm curious to see what he's going to do with that mana here. He's playing another Howling Mine. That's his game plan. And in, in a way, the Winter Orb is going to work against me here because I need my mana to play out all the creatures and all the cards that I'm drawing thanks to the Howling Minds of my opponent. So I'm not sure if that Howling Mind here was a good play, but we'll see. Tapping for five here, playing a Cockatrice. And that Cockatrice is, I believe, not even going to, to compensate for the lives that uh, my opponent is, is surely getting next turn from that Ivory Tower. Or is he playing, he's playing another Howling Mine for two? Is he? Oh, okay, I think we're, yeah, he's playing another Howling Mine here for two. So I only get to untap, untap one land, and this is a problem because I only have two mana available. And I'm drawing so many cards, and maybe I'm just blocking myself here with that Winter Orb. But okay, it's a decision I've made. There's no going back here. We kind of go back in time. There's a crumble again. And that crumble, that's why sideboarding is so decisive. With that crumble, I can just take away his key pieces and make it very difficult because Wouter needs those ivory towers because they give him a cushion um, to kind of take in a lot of damage. And then he can just simply wait until he draws into a Wrath of God and just do a board wipe. And then I have to start all over again with less creatures available in my deck. And at the same um, at the same time, I'm, I'm slowly killing myself by drawing all those cards because right now I'm drawing four cards. But because of the crumble, his plan doesn't work. Putting an unholy strength here on the cockatrice. Hitting him for five. Putting <laughs> a giant growth on here, hitting him for eight. All I'm missing here is a berserk, but obviously they're not reprinted in, um, in Unlimited, so I can't do that. And I'm playing a Lanoir Elves.
And again, I'm dangerously, dangerously uh, filling the board right now. I'm kind of asking Wouter here for a Wrath of God. Then again, I don't really mind losing a Lanowar Elf and a Birds of Paradise at this point. But I wonder if it's a good decision, especially with all those pump spells I have. You just need a body to put all the pump spells on. So, I mean, this is four mana now. By the way, do you see that one darker plane? That's a fourth edition plane, planes. That's why it's a little bit darker. So, technically, it's not fully revised here. Wouter, it's not fully revised. But that's, that's okay. I just thought it was funny. I first thought it was an, an unlimited planes that I was playing against. Um, there's a minus one, minus one counter that I'm putting there on the cockatrice from the uh, unstable mutation. Drawing four cards. And this is a decisive game, right? So we're in one, one, one each. And I'm just swinging in full. So that means five damage unless Wouter can do something about it. And it looks like he can. Tapping one mana. Is there a swords coming? A red elemental blast. And I'm playing a blue elemental blast. Hey, so I've put those in to protect me. And I'm playing a giant grove as well. That means he's on one life. And here you can see how incredibly aggressive my green blue build can be with four giant groves and four unstable mutations. And there's a disenchant. And am I able to counter this as well? Wow, I'm just completely blocking all the spells here from um, Wouter. And that means he only has one mana. And what he needs is a balance. That's what he needs. If he has a balance, he can still get back. Oh, and we actually, we had a little, little, little talk here. Remember, we're just playing casual. And maybe you saw that, but Wouter chose to untap his basic planes. And he said, oh, I just made a huge, you know, mistake here. I said, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, and he's playing a lightning bolt. And he's, <laughs> he's actually able to save himself. That's amazing. So by, by untapping the plateau instead of the planes, he was able to use his lightning bolt and use his swords there. And I just think it's really funny. I mean, still, he's on one life. He's still alive. But I'm attacking. What am I doing? Oh, no, I'm not attacking. I'm tapping for mana. I'm playing a surrender for free. Um, and I'm discarding my, uh, my Brain Geyser. I think, again, I wonder if this is a good decision because obviously I'm not going to use Brain Geyser or Geezer or however you want to pronounce it. I'm not going to use it uh, on my own uh, for myself to draw cards, but I can use it to, um, on Wouter and kind of force him deck that. So kind of kill him with, with his own weapons. Um, so let's see what's going to happen if he has a red elemental blast or a swords or a balance. A lightning bolt is not going to save him now. Because the Surrender Pafrit has four toughness. It's really an in insanely good creature when you think about it. I mean, compare Surrender Pafrit with Pirate Ship. I mean, what were they thinking? There we go. Taking, taking a damage doesn't really matter here. This whole, this whole match, I haven't looked at my life total once. It doesn't really matter. Unstable mutation, forcing him, giving him two targets. And nope, that's the game. Just too much pressure. And uh, so I've managed to win this one against uh, a, a great deck, really. A very interesting uh, combo deck. And especially in, in revised, it's a, it's a bold attempt uh, to make this work. And I think it does work. But like I said, after the first game against the combo deck, you kind of have an idea what your opponent is going to do. Doesn't mean you're going to win, but it means you have a much, much bigger shot um, of actually winning after all that information. But still, there were some very close games. Um, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school gameplay, you can click on the link that's appearing right now. Um, and for now, thank you for watching, and see you next time.